Welcome to The Soft Life with me, Candy Washington, where we explore all things self-love, manifestations, and relationships with a cheeky dash of pop culture news. So be sure to subscribe, share, and join us on Patreon. I'm your girl, Candy Washington, and I am so grateful for this time that I have together with you. So if you're listening on the podcast, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review, and share with a friend. If you're watching this over on our YouTube channel, be sure to also subscribe, like the video, comment below, and share with a friend. Don't forget to check out our description box or show notes for free goodies and staying in the know. And as you listen to this session, be sure to head over to Instagram at Candy Washington. Give me a follow, give me a DM, tag me with your aha moment moments and I will show you some love right back. So thank you so much for joining this self-care community. So let's dive into today's episode, which is the top five signs of self-sabotage. So a lot of times we think that we are doing the best we can to get the things that we want in in this world or in our life, like we're working really hard or we're, you know, really striving for a relationship or, a, you know, a career or a fitness goal or whatever it is, right? But somehow the moment we get really close or we're almost there, it slips through our fingers, it falls through the cracks and we just can't seem to get it. And if we have self-awareness, we can sometimes see that maybe we are actually the ones doing the things that is holding us back from what we want to achieve in life. And sometimes we do that because we might want a way out. So let's talk a little bit about why sometimes we self-sabotage and then I'll, and then we can go into the signs of self-sabotage. So sometimes we self-sabotage because we want a way out. We're actually not happy with where we're at. We Something in our life isn't working. So say you're in a relationship, but you know the person isn't right for you. You might sabotage that relationship. Say you are at a job, but you're unfilled. You're not happy. So maybe you start slacking off. You know, maybe you start, you know, just not really showing up fully because you actually don't want to be promoted. You don't want to be there. You're just looking for a way out, but you don't want to take that initiative and that step to make the decision and then take action to get out of that situation. So instead of proactively getting out of it, you self-sabotage. So you make it somebody else's decision for that situation to end or for you to get out of it, if that makes sense. Also, there could be the need to control. Maybe you just feel like you need to control everything. And so since, of course, (laughs) control is an illusion, we're the only person we can control as ourselves. We can't control other people or circumstances in that sense. We end up self-sabotaging ourselves because we just want that control. Um, Another big root cause of self-sabotage is actually low self-esteem and low self-worth. There is a part of you, whether it is subconscious or um, intrinsic, whether it's from maybe a childhood experience or childhood trauma or just conditioning or relationship dynamic, where there is a part of you that believes that you're not worthy of what it is that you want. So you might be saying, oh, I want this job, I want this career, I want this money, I want this house, I want these finances, I want this car, I want this relationship, I want all of these great things, right? But there's a part of you that doesn't believe that you actually are worthy and deserving of it. So you're saying you want these things, you think you want these things, but your operating system, your subconscious mind actually believes that you don't deserve these things. And so that is what is actually causing you to self-sabotage because you're saying you want it, but if you don't believe that you deserve it, you will subconsciously do things to ensure that you don't get it because you don't get what you want. You get what you believe. So if you believe, and usually this is very subconscious, we, we don't go around walking around thinking to myself, I'm not worthy. I'm not deserving. Like, no, you don't. It, it's a very subconscious thing, Right. You feel like something isn't for you. It's out of your reach. You've made too many mistakes. You're not this enough. You're not that enough, whatever it is, right? And so if you subconsciously believe that you're not worthy of these things, you're going to make yourself right. And that can include sabotaging yourself. Some people don't believe they're worthy of happiness. Some people don't think that they are worthy of love or success or whatever it is. So if your main operating system, your subconscious belief is that you aren't good enough or you're not worthy, 
you better believe that that is what you will experience because then you're going to prove yourself right. Yeah, I, I knew I wasn't worthy of that. I knew I wasn't good enough. I knew people like me don't get that or whatever it is, right? It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So I think the first step to the signs and in, in kind of getting over self-sabotage is that awareness, knowing what is the root cause? You know, why am I doing things that ultimately hinder my own success, love, happiness, fulfillment? Why am I getting in my own way? So I think that's sort of like the base foundation, figure out what is that root cause? And if it is low self-esteem, low confidence, low self-worth, then you work on your self-love, you work on your self-concept, you get a self-care plan in place, you talk to someone and you get that confidence, you get that self-esteem, you get that self-belief. So now let's dive into five signs that you might be self-sabotaging yourself. The first one is you are a perfectionist. Like this might sound counterintuitive. You're like, no, I'm a perfectionist. I want everything right. I want everything perfect. So of course I'm going to succeed. That's not sabotage. That's just how I'm going to succeed and be perfect and great. It's self-sabotage because perfection does not exist. Nothing is ever perfect. No one is ever perfect. But having things, having to be perfect in order to take the next step, in order to elevate, in order to move forward, is a great way of keeping yourself stuck, right? If something has to be perfect in order for you to move forward, in order for you to take that leap, in order for you to go out there and get it, then you're always going to be stuck in almost perfect purgatory, so on the surface, it seems like, no, I want to get that A plus gold star. It has to be, everything has to be right before I do it. You, It looks and sounds like you really want to be successful because you want to make sure that it's going to work and it's going to succeed. But it's actually rooted in fear of failure. That if I put something out there and it's not perfect and it doesn't work and I fail at it, then somehow that means I'm a failure. But when you have that high self-esteem, that good self-concept, that loving relationship with yourself, you know that failure isn't who you are. It's just information. It's just an event. It's just data. It's just, oh, the way I did it this way didn't work out. These are the things that worked out. These are the things that didn't. How can I pivot, course correct, and keep it pushing and keep it moving? Everybody fails. Failure is not who you are. It's not your worthiness. It's not your value. It's just something that happens or doesn't happen. Take that information and move on. But when you're operating from that place of I get my worth and my value out of what I do, how I perform, how external things are going for me, then of course you're going to be stuck in perfectionism because you're fearful that if it is not perfect and if it doesn't work exactly the way I think it's going to work, then somehow that means I'm not good enough, that I am a failure. And that's simply not true. So instead of having to face failure, you sabotage yourself so you don't even have to get there, right? If you don't put yourself out there, then you can't ever fail, then you can't ever be a failure. So let me just make sure everything is perfect. It's not perfect. We're not going to do it, right? See how that loop is? See how it keeps you stuck? The second sign, which is another way that keeps you stuck, is procrastination. You put things off. Uh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it next week. I'll start in a year. All of those things. You just procrastinate, procrastinate, procrastinate. You're like, oh, you know, I'm going to start that business, but I'm going to watch reality TV all day instead. Oh, I'm going to start working out and really get my health together, but I'm going to start my diet tomorrow. You know, oh, I really want to find, you know, love in a relationship in my life, but I won't sign up for that dating app until, you know, next month or whatever it is, right? You just continuously put things off. You do things incompletely, you start something and you won't finish it. It's procrastination. And that's kind of really goes hand in hand with perfectionism. It's just a different uh, excuse not to put yourself out there because you fear failure. You feel loss of control. You feel, you fear finding out that maybe you're right, that maybe you're somehow not good enough. Of course, that's not true. You already are good enough. Intrinsically, you are already deserving and valuable and worthy of everything you want in this world and more. It's just the faulty thinking, that faulty belief system, that limiting belief system that makes you think that somehow you're not good enough, that you're not worthy. And since that's what you think, that's what shows up in your life. And then you do all these coping things and all of these different things to make sure that you're right, to keep you small. It has to be perfect. I'll do it tomorrow. All of those tactics. It's all wrapped up in that same 
loss of control, fear of failure, and feeling not good enough. So you sabotage yourself in order to make yourself right. Or you sabotage yourself to get out of a situation that you don't have the confidence enough to, to say, I don't like my job. I want to quit. That's scary. That's big. Go out and get a new job. I'm not happy in this relationship. We're breaking up. It's scary to think I have to now be alone and start over. What will people think? All of those things, right? So you, then you do these things in order to sabotage the situation so that it doesn't seem like it's so it happens out of your control, if that makes sense. The third is that you keep toxic people in your life. I don't think we talk about this enough when it comes to self-sabotage. Sure, we talk about toxic friendships, toxic relationships, but the bigger implication of keeping toxic people in your life, again, goes back to your core belief system. I'm not worthy and deserving of healthy relationships, which looks like I'm not worthy and deserving of respect. I'm not worthy and deserving of love, of forgiveness, of grace, of compassion, of support, of community, right? Of genuine reciprocity, because that's what healthy relationships give you. Toxic relationships gives you the opposite of that. Toxic relationships are disrespectful. They're dramatic. They're abusive. They're roller coasters. And this is either, this could be people in your family. This is, could be a romantic. This could be friends. These could be coworkers. I'm just talking about interpersonal relationships, right? Because you can have toxic people in all of those buckets. So if you continue to have those toxic people in your life, how do you think you're ever going to elevate to the next level, right? How are you going to elevate in your life if you're surrounded by negative, abusive, and toxic people? You know, sometimes it is out of our control. At the job, maybe you have a negative toxic coworker, but you can create boundaries where you don't have to interact with them. You can keep a bare minimum just to get the job done. You don't have to befriend that coworker. You don't have to engage in the gossip. You don't have to do X, Y, and Z with them. You can create healthy boundaries. Even if it's a family member, sometimes you have to cut family members out just because your family doesn't mean your kin, right? So you, you have to make those uh, decisions. If it's a romantic partner, get out of that relationship. If it's a friendship, sometimes you got to let people go. But keeping toxic people in your life is a huge form of self-sabotage because you're only going to elevate to the level of your surroundings, of the people you surround yourself with. You're just going to continue to be in their drama. You're just going to continue to be in their dysfunction. And you're going to continue to be distracted from the dreams and goals that you have in your life. So if you want to stop self-sabotaging and you want to elevate in your life, take an inventory of who you have in your life. Your relationships, your friendships, they should inspire you to be the highest version of yourself. And if those aren't the people in your life that you have, then you need to start cutting those people. The fourth sign is that you people please. People pleasing looks like you put your happiness, your well-being, what you want and need on the back burner. It's last if it even is even on the list. And you prioritize making other people happy, meeting other people's needs and wants and objectives. And other people's feelings mean more to you than your own. So that's people pleasing. It might sound like, oh, you're just this giver and you just self-sacrifice and all that stuff. But it's actually really rooted in control and low self-esteem and low self-worth. It's rooted in I'm not good enough on my own. So I have to make myself needed by somebody else in order to be valuable in that person's life. And I'm going to control the way that person feels about me by being needed by that person. So I'm going to people please. I'm going to always say yes. I'm going to always show up. I'm always going to self-sacrifice, abandon myself for these people, right? It's just a conditioning. It's a learned thing. So if you find yourself people pleasing in your life, you are more than likely also self-sabotaging because you can't put yourself first and really put yourself out there and really honor what your needs and your wants and your goals are in life. If you were always catering to the feelings and the needs and the wants and the objectives of other people, the two can't happen at the same time. Of course, I'm not talking about being, um, uh, selfish and the negative connotation. You're not looking out for yourself at to the detriment of somebody else. No, but there is healthy selfishness where it's 
my needs and wants and well-being is my first and best priority. And I choose to honor myself. I choose to honor the space I take up in this world. And I know that I am worthy and deserving. And I know that I am valuable. And I know that how I feel, what I want, who I am matters, period. So it's having a healthy uh, selfishness, healthy confidence, right? Because it's unhealthy to put everybody in front of yourself. That's unhealthy. You're doing them a disservice and you're doing yourself a disservice. And you're definitely sabotaging yourself if you don't even believe that you matter. When you know that you matter, you don't have a problem putting yourself first. Again, not the detriment to other people. We're not talking about unhealthy habits in that way. But there is healthy selfishness. How I feel matters. And I'm going to honor that first. So if you find yourself people pleasing, not thinking that how you feel and what you want matters, that is a big sign of self-sabotage. The fifth sign, and I think we don't talk about this enough, again, when it comes to self-sabotage, is that you don't take risk. You don't try anything new. You don't get out of your comfort box, uh, your zone. You don't take any risks. You, you play it small. You play it safe. You, you stay confined. And that is a form of self-sabotage because there's no way that you can elevate, expand, up-level in your life if you don't try something new, if you don't take the, a risk, right? Again, it goes back to trying perfectionism. Oh, I have to make sure it's perfect. Procrastination. Oh, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it, you know, later. Um, you know, I'm not going to take this risk and go out on my own and, and do X, Y, and Z. If you don't take the risk, if you don't quit the job, if you don't start the business, if you don't, um, you know, say yes to the date, if you don't travel, if you don't expand yourself, you know, whatever it is, whatever risk in your life that you really want to put out there that you're not taking, that is a form of self-sabotage. You're sabotaging your potential to up-level in your life. You're sabotaging your potential to be happier, to be more fulfilled, to be more joyful, to be more successful. You know, every, and I, I just don't mean like, uh, start, and again, not just starting a business. I don't just mean entrepreneurs. I just mean like anybody. You don't take the risk to go for the promotion at your job. You don't take the risk to apply to a job that maybe you don't have the right credentials for, but you know you could do a good job at it. Whatever it is, right? whatever it is. You don't take the risk to train for a marathon. You don't take the risk to bet on yourself. To You don't take the risk to invest in yourself, whatever it is, to make new friends. You know what I mean? Um, you just don't take risk because again, it goes back to if I take a risk, that means I could fail. That means I could not get what I want. That means it could not work out oh my gosh, if I fail, if it doesn't work out, oh, then I, then that must mean that I was right. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not deserving. I'm less than because look, I took this risk and it didn't work out. And that's garbage. If you take a risk and it doesn't work out, guess what that means? You took a risk and it didn't work out. <laughs> that's literally all that it means. It does not mean that you're not worthy. It does not mean that you're not good enough. It is not an indication of your worth and your value as a beautiful, unique human being. It just means you took a risk and it didn't work out. And the beauty is you can take another risk and maybe, and then that one will work out or the next one will, will work out or the other one will, will, work, will work out. Start small, start taking small risks. And then when you realize, oh, I took this small risk, it didn't work out, but guess what? I didn't die. I'm still here. Everything's okay. Like we're good. You can kind of get over that fear and then take another risk and then have that risk work out. And you're like, oh, I'm confident. I got, you know, I did something that's on my comfort zone. It's working out. What's a bigger risk I can take? But of course, I mean, doing this in a, in a healthy way. I'm not saying take ridiculous risk, like don't put your life at risk or your life savings at risk. I'm not talking about unhealthy risk. I'm talking about healthy risk, right? No risk, no reward. And again, when you don't try things new, when you don't take risk, it's literally because you feel somehow that if you fail, it means that you're a failure. And that's really not true. It's just an event. It's just information. It's just data. So try something new. You know, take a risk, fail some, fail at something and realize that it's okay. 
do something imperfectly and realize it's okay. Something you've been putting off, do it today. Stop people pleasing. Please yourself first and everything fill your own cup up. So there you have it. Those are the five signs of self-sabotage, which is usually rooted in feeling that you have to be in control, you are afraid of failing, or you feel like somehow you're not good enough. So you sabotage yourself in order to prove yourself right. The first one is perfectionism. The second is procrastination. The third is you keep toxic people in your life. The fourth is that you people please. And the fifth is that you don't take risk. So I implore you today, if you see yourself in any of those signs or symptoms to do the opposite, take that risk, get those people out of your life and know that you are worthy and deserving and that you are enough. So I hope that this episode helped you. I know that it has helped me. And if it has, be sure to share with a friend and don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment below, rate, review, wherever you are and share, 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 and join the uh, candy cane, <laughs> our candy cane community. Just go ahead and join us and I will see you guys next time. As always, be well, take care of yourself and each other. Ready to unlock your true potential and manifest the life of your dreams? Then I've got something super special just for you. Our mind-blowing self-love and manifestation courses. Picture this, a journey of self-discovery where you'll find a deep well of self-love and acceptance. Say goodbye to self-doubt and hello to unshakable confidence. Our courses are designed to help you embrace your worthiness and tap into the incredible power of self-love. But that's not all. We'll also dive deep into the transformative world of manifestations. You'll learn proven tools and techniques and strategies to align your thoughts, beliefs, and actions with your wildest dreams. So get ready to create the success, happiness, love, and abundance that you deserve. So what are you waiting for? Head over to candywashington.com backslash courses to get started. Again, that's candywashington.com backslash courses.